Welcome to this week's Yorkshire Legends interview on Radio Yorkshire with me, Derek Clark. I'm delighted to see you. This week we're joined by Bradford City icon Ian Ormondroy. Ian, thanks very much for joining us no this problem. week. Um, we'll kick off from the very beginning. Uh, I've got here, born 22nd of September 1964 in Bradford. Growing up back then, um, did you always, were you always out playing football? Yeah, I was uh, always keen as mustard from being four or five t- through to, through to uh, when I retired. Um, always kicking a ball around and always uh, mad, mad keen on football. So it was uh, it, obviously it's, you never quite think you're going to end up being a professional, but that's that was always the dream, really. And were you sort of do you, do you have any role models back then growing up? Um, yeah, that's, I mean the, the Leeds, the Leeds United team around then, sort of the the seventies team were uh, obviously the, were an amazing team. You Lorimers and you know, Billy Bremners and all these guys, Eddie Grace. All these guys were sort of the best team around at the time, and obviously Liverpool as well. Um, so you always looked at them, and uh, you watched, used to watch them on Match of the Day, and, and sort of look up to them big time. And we know you as a striker. Were you always sort of was that always your position back as a, a young boy? Uh, not really. I mean, when I was at school, I, I played centre half because obviously a big lad, and uh, I was the one that could edit away and things. So I played centre half at school. Um, as, as I got a bit older into my teens, I started playing up front and then left side of midfield a little bit as well. So played all over the place really, but um, I was never really that bothered where I played as long as I was in the team. You said that you didn't think you'd be a footballer back, back then. Mm. Did you have sort of other career aspirations when you when you were younger? Not really. Um, I wasn't massively massively academic at school, and um, it was one of them where you, you hope you're going to be a professional footballer. But um, I thought the chance had passed me by a little bit. Really, I had a trial at Leeds when I was about. Uh, six, 15, 16, um, but never trial anywhere else and then played non-league football at Manningham Mills and then Thackley. Um, got spotted at Thackley by uh, an old scout here called Maurice Lindley, who was a great guy. Um, he was coming to watch me a few times and I started to get a little bit nervous because I knew he was there. Um, but uh, eventually I got taken on when I was about 20, just, just after 20. Yeah, it's sort of quite old, isn't it, for mm. a player to get picked up, but then it must be great to be called up, uh, be spotted. Uh, yeah, club, your hometown club. That's right. It's, you know, I'm from Bradford. I'm a Bradford fan. Um, you know, love Bradford City all, all, all my life. So it's been a, it was a dream come true to actually be able to uh, to sign for this club, and uh, yeah, really, really big, uh, big privilege. And when you joined, the club was in a sort of a bit, bit of troubles, weren't they? With yeah. the fire the previous season, and then yeah. moving to Odson. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a tough time because the fire happened in in '85, and I signed in the uh, in the September after the fire. So it was a, a really really tough time with obviously playing at uh, the old Leeds Road, Huddersfield Town, and Ellen Road, and Odsall Stadium, obviously. So it was a tough time for us all, really, for all the players. Um, but it, you know, I was just desperate to be a footballer, and um, we had a good young team at the time as well. You know, Stuart McCall, John Henry, Greg Albert, these sort of lads were all in the team, young lads, same similar age to me. And I was lucky that I came into a team that was uh, full of young lads and, and good players, and that helped me along as, a bit as well. So, uh, I mean, we should have we should have done a lot better, really, in sort of 86, 87, 88. We should have got promoted to the to the old first division, and it's a regret of um, certainly them and me that we didn't quite manage that. Trevor Cherry obviously brought you here. What was he like to, to work under? Uh, Trevor was quiet. It was um, it was a, a, a him and him and Terry Orris, and Terry was very very loud and quite aggressive and the old school manager and coach whereas Trevor was a lot quieter um, and Taff used to, that's, that's uh, Terry Yorth, used to slaughter me, um, used to give me some real stick um, but he knew that he knew that I was the type of lad that needed a, a rocket really at times and uh, it certainly helped me, uh, he used to fire me up before games and, and get really get me at it and um, I sort of I always thank him for that, really. <laughs> <laughs> and joining the club was it maybe a wee bit in awe when, when you stepped into the dressing room for the first time. Yeah, I mean, the first season was difficult because um, uh, Bobby Campbell uh, was the old centre forward. Obviously, just sadly passed away. Um, Bobby was an icon, um, and it was difficult the first year because Bobby Bobby was in charge of the shirt and. He wasn't going to let me have his shirt, uh, fair enough, so I had to battle my way and work hard and work hard in training and, and do everything I could to try and uh, try and get into the team. So it wasn't easy that first year, uh, I just started to get in the team at the end of the first season but uh, then I started to, to sort of start doing alright and, and got in the team. I know he was a very demanding character but was it great to sort of learn off him? Yeah, yeah he was a, a fantastic um, role model. Um, certainly on the pitch, not in other ways, but <laughs> off the pitch, uh, led you astray a little bit. But uh, but that was Bobby. But yeah, I mean, it, on the field, he was a great example, and he looked after you as well, which was a really tough old centre forward, and uh, he certainly looked after you on the field. That eighty-seven, eighty-eight season that you mentioned, that you come close to being promoted. Mm. To, mm. What was so good about that campaign? 
Um, we did a really settled squad. We'd probably only used about 14 or 15 players the whole season. The team was similar all the way through. And uh, like I say, a lot of good young lads, really good young players, loads of enthusiasm and energy. Um, and good players, you know, with some good players, and just a shame at the end of that season we'd, that we couldn't, you know, if we'd have got a couple of new fresh legs in, I think, um, uh, you know, quality fresh legs in, I think we'd have probably done it, but uh, wasn't quite quite to be, and we just missed out the last game here against Ipswich, and then obviously the playoffs against Middlesbrough, and, you know, we just we, we were really unlucky that season, and everybody sort of looks back on that. Certainly, every time I see them lads again, they, they always talk about that season. And can you remember making your debut here? Uh, no, I remember I made my debut away at Shrewsbury and I always seem to remember that, um, but I don't know who, who I made my debut against, it probably would have been here, it would probably been either at Odsall or, I think it might mm. have been at Odsall or at Leeds Road or, or Ellen Road, because we were just here, it was just so weird that season where we were all over the place, um, but I think it was at Odsall actually, my home debut, but I could, I could, I've not won for um, really remembering my stats and, and things like mm. that, I, I was more of a you know more of a team player and, and didn't think about goals that I scored and things like that, you, you remember the odd goal, but... Um, no, I remember away at Shrewsbury was my debut, my actual uh, league debut, and then I think it was at Odsall um, uh, for the home debut. And when the time came to leave the club, of course, Aston Villa mm. uh, came in for mm. you. Well, I've seen a video where they sort of sold you just to upgrade the changing rooms, is that? Well, <laughs> yeah. money for, for it, that? Was, it was big money, it was 650 grand mm. at the time, and, and that was huge money in them days. Um, and I more or less got told I had to go, you know, and I, obviously a Bradford lad and um, I was still living at home at the time and it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a wrench really. Um, but I think as time went by I knew I had to do it. Um, Aston Villa were, were in the first division and, you know, a big club and still had a big club and um, they had a history then of, you know, winning the European Cup and different things. So it was never, it was never a case of I wasn't going to go, but I had a few doubts. But it was a, it was a really good move in the end, and um, the second season I was there, we finished second, so in the, in the old first division, so mm -hmm. it was a good move. A good How move. did that move all come about? Because Graham Taylor was in charge then, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think Graham had been watching me quite a bit, and he liked big lads, and he liked his centre forwards, and um, he'd been me watching me for a while. But he was clever because he he realised that I wasn't um, my my strength wasn't really with my back my back to goal. Uh, it was more facing the goals and going forward. So he played me on the left of a three quite a lot, um, which which worked for me and um, I played, like to say, left side of a three in a very successful team that second year and um, we were sort of really close to winning the league and, you know, if you could have done that at the time, that would have been a, an unbelievable achievement. With the team we had, you know, we had some, some really workmanlike players, but um, to, to do that, that was the last time that Liverpool won the league in, in 1990, so uh, probably a little bit of a regret that we didn't quite do it that year. Yeah, because you had some big players there at the time, like Tony yeah. Pascarino, Dwight York yeah, was coming through as well. that's right, it? Dwight was just, just coming through and uh, obviously David Platt, yeah. Paul McGrath was just a class act as well and with some really uh, underrated uh, underrated players at the time there. Did you feel any pressure going there? It was a record sign at that point, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean the first year I was there, I went in something like February time and the first that first half of the season was really difficult until the end of that season and the team was struggling a bit as well. And then the bottom half of the table, so it was difficult. But um, the second, that second year, when we finished second, we were flying and mm. got a lot more confidence from playing week in, week out, and, and playing and, and winning games on a regular basis. And that gave me and the team a lot of confidence. Did you feel maybe a sort of jump from maybe the standard of player you're facing to going into the, yeah. uh, what, the, Without what is there now the Premier League? Yeah, that's right. It was a massive, massive step, you know, from the from the second division to the first division or or Championship to Premier League as it is now. But I think the standards e even higher now because of all, obviously all the the foreign players that have come into the game, I think the level's gone up one more league really and um, the Premier League now standard is, uh, is frightening really isn't it but you know just a shame we can't get a few more uh, English players in, in the Premier League teams for me I'd, I'd certainly be bringing a ruling where you've got to have you know at least three or four English players in, in Premier League teams because how's the England team ever going to progress if, if we don't get English players playing, playing in Premier League teams to me they, they should be doing that. Yeah, I think many would agree. Um, yeah. Back then, you were playing, playing for Villa with Graham, under Graham Taylor. Some people say he was ahead of his time, coaching wise. What was it like to play him? He was the best manager I had by a, by a mile. Mm. Um, he was such a such a great manager in all ways, tactically. He was so organised. Um, the thing you, you'd be playing, you know, you'd be playing four four two, um, and I know tactics are a little bit different now with diamonds and things like that. But it changed to if things weren't going our way, it changed to three centre halves and play wing backs and 
uh, you know, just play three in midfield, or he, he was so he was so tactically aware that if a game wasn't going our way, change it. And the amount of times that we changed things, and all of a sudden we've scored a goal and we've got on top. Um, just so many, you know, you never knew his, his, his training methods were really good. You never quite knew when when he'd be there or when he wouldn't be there. The training was different all the time. There's so many aspects of his of his management was was fantastic and. Um, just organised as well, really. You, you always knew if you were still staying in Southampton in three weeks' time, you knew which hotel you'd be in, and little things, little little details were. He was so detailed in everything he did, and shame he's gone as well. And uh, you know what a great guy he was. Yeah, of course he left the club, joined uh, England. Are you maybe yeah. surprised never maybe worked out at England. Just yeah, a little bit. I, I think I think he found it a little bit hard with the, the sort of the big the big name players. Um, with us, it was sort of lads coming back from from sort of lower league clubs, and it was when he was dealing with Linekers and all these guys where they'd been been around for quite a while and were established English players. I think he found that a little bit more difficult to to get on their wavelength a little bit but um, yeah it was a shame it was that Holland game where I would look back on thinking if they'd have won that game mm. you know he'd have probably he'd have, he'd have been England manager for quite a while but who knows I guess and with Villa as well you played a chance to play in Europe didn't you? Yeah I played in Europe in my second season yeah mm. played a team called Banica Strava from mm. the old Czechoslovakia and then we played Inter Milan um, home and away which was they had a team an unbelievable team at the time yeah. was German internationals they were either, the team that played was either German internationals or Italian internationals and it was like well, we played them at home we beat them 2-0 mm. um, and we were after that game I always remember we were so buzzing after that game thinking we've, you know, we've got a real chance here now to go to the San Siro and, and beat Inter Milan with a team they've got uh, and unfortunately <laughs> we lost 3-0 away uh, I always remember Tony Cascarino had a, had a header um, and it was a fairly straightforward header to score and he missed and that was a turning point. I think it might have been one nil or two at the time and if we'd have scored that they'd have had to score four goals and uh, but you know they they beat us three nil and uh, they were a class act and you know it was a shame we couldn't do it on the day.